In this video I'm going over this tab right here which is called paneling tools and that's a plugin for Grasshopper which you can download for free on Food for Rhino. Make sure you look in the links uh, that I have in the description so you can download that. But we're going to start with the basic geometry and I'll show you the basics of how to use this and how to get some cool results. So you want to start with the base geometry and so I'll do an X, a YZ plane which what it does is it'll create a plane upwards on the Z direction so we can create an arc. In this arc, we plug that plane into there. We can now give it a radius here. And um, that's going to be our base geometry that we can adjust. And we can extrude. And which direction? In the same direction as this arc. So we could do an amplitude, bring in the plane for the vector put that in the direction we put the arc here and now we can give it a value let's say of um, let's say 400 and that'll give us our base geometry where we could apply our um, paneling tools so I'm gonna go here to high quality so we can see it a little bit clearer here in the tutorial and uh, I'm gonna go over the the different components. As you can see, we have so many options here on all of these uh, different panels within the tab, but we're just gonna focus on a few that will give us the idea of the overall uh, components of, of how paneling tools works. So I'm gonna group this together and give that a color. That way we can be um, organizing our information. So we have that, and now we're gonna go paneling tools, we're gonna go to grid, and then we're going to subdivide by number. Now you can also subdivide by length, but by number it's a little bit easier to start uh, to get an idea. So we'll plug in that surface and you'll see that the default number, U number is 10 and B number is 10. So we can create a slider, let's say from one to 20 and put that here and here. And then now we can plug this into the U, V number. Now we see that we have small amount of divisions. We can slowly create some divisions there and also increase the the subdivisions the other way to kind of get a nice pattern that is uh, uniform and kind of both ways. That's typically what will give you a good result. So there we have that basic grid pattern, which is going to allow us to develop and put a panel in between of that. So the next step is going to be to offset. So we're going to do a grid utility and we're going to offset. So let's look for it here. Usually. Um, offset grid. Usually I double click here and I go offset and you'll see offset grid. Um, so we're going to plug that grid there. We're also going to plug in that extrusion B rep and then we're going to give that a distance. So this is the distance that of the thickness of the, your structure. So I'm going to go to a 12 here and as you can see we have that offsetting in now. If you want it to go in a different direction, I, if I'm not mistaken, you could uh, flip the direction of the, the surface and then plug that into the into both of these and then it'll go actually the other way around. So if that's not the way that you want it to offset, you can also go to a slider that goes to a negative rather, rather than a positive. So um, there's different options of, uh, of how to do this. So let's unpreview that and let's keep those two grids and now let's move forward um, to create the pattern. Okay, so now that we have the two grids, it's a matter of now you can do a cellulate, cellulate 3D grid, which what it'll do is it'll create boxes around those two grids. So those two grid points and as you can see, we have a really cool kind of faceted rectangular uh, structure that we can now, you know, we can adjust increase or decrease the, the radius. So we can go here to 200 like we had before, but we could also increase the number of divisions or we could decrease the number of divisions depending on, um, on what we like. So let's leave that on five and eight. And then here we can also, the distance, the thickness of it, we can also increase or decrease that depending on what we want. So let's actually leave that at 24, kind of a thicker uh, structure. And so that's the basics of how this works basically creates a grid and it puts things in between that, that grid. That's as basic as it goes. Now, 
The next step is instead of just creating these boxes, we're going to actually put an object we create inside of here. And that's going to make this paneling tool such a nice and uh, versatile tool that you can put this in windows, you can put this in uh, ground surfaces, you can put this everywhere. So this next little step, I'm just going to create a really basic geometry. I'm just going to create a cylinder here in Rhino. And so as you can see here, there we have it. That's going to be the B rep that we're actually going to put inside of here. So let's go ahead and uh, show you how to do that. Let's go to panel 3D and let's go to morph 3D. It's going to morph this into this 3D uh, structure. So let's put plug in the first grid and let's plug in the second grid. And um, if the pattern that you put is backwards, then you would flip these two wires over. And pattern objects, that's actually going to be this. So to bring that in, we're going to have to put the B rep. We're going to create a B rep and you bring this in, this little black uh, hexagon with the, with like a little cylinder in it. We can go set one B rep, make sure that that's selected. And let's, um, let's actually use this B rep as a pattern objects between the bounding, the, the pattern object. So now you'll see that as, uh, as it, as I said, what it did is it created that whole pattern created throughout that grid. And now we could even, you know, uh, if we wanted to, we can go on this side and we can play around with this geometry and it will actually adjust the geometry uh, here. And, as, uh, and if it doesn't work that way, you can flip the grid from one direction to the other. And you'll see that it actually does it the other way around too. So that's one way you can use paneling tools bringing in geometry and creating some um, let's say if we could do this and we create a box let's say here in the corner and we mirror it both ways actually let me decrease this bring that there and I'll mirror this here and I'll do a boolean difference for a quick result deselect that set this as the b rep now we've created this other structure that has some perforations inside so there's many many ways that you could use this uh, b rep tool the last thing you can do with uh, paneling tools is create let's say it's uh, you can create a sphere here of 12 put a box around it And if we deconstruct the B-Rep, we can create some spheres here in the corner. We make that a four. And then a Boolean uh, solid difference between that box and the spheres. And when we go down here, we'll have this parametric box that we created that we can now plug into here. And so instead of that B-Rep that we have here, now we're going to dis disconnect that and plug in this parametric one that we just created, so pattern objects. And so it'll take a little bit longer to kind of uh, create that, but let's give it a thicker wall so we can see more of the effect. And we can see some of the effects it creates. Uh, now we can, now if we decrease this to let's say uh, 10, it'll actually, um, you know, it'll keep adjusting using the parameters of this, of of this parametric kind of box that we created. So, so I've gone ahead and organized the script. We have the initial base geometry. We also have the grid that we created out here. We also created the box that we that is parametric, and here is the result. And so I'll make sure to add this, the script and the model on the description so you can download it and play around with it. And hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something from this tutorial.